All right, good evening folks, it's Enforcer Matt and welcome back to another short war video and today we have pretty big news coming out of Ukraine that the Ukrainian military is preparing for a pretty large siege by the Russian forces on the city of Kharkiv in the coming weeks and they're currently making preparations to defend the city. We're also hearing that USA has purchased about 81 fighter jets from Kazakhstan to potentially hand over to the Ukrainians and finally we are getting word that the Ukrainian Air Force is starting to ask the Polish to defend the Ukrainian skies with Polish air defense. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into our first article of the day, which goes to Visegrad 24. And in this post, we see the German newspaper Bild is reporting that the sources in the Ukrainian army believe Russia could launch an assault on Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, and they say up to 40,000 Russian soldiers could participate in the attack. And this is not totally unexpected because the Russians have been having their eyes set on Kharkiv for quite some time, and it sounds like the Russians are making preparations to actually really seize the city in a very very big way they haven't done before with up to 40,000 soldiers and the Ukrainians are getting ready for that. They're trying to do everything in their power to prepare for it, which includes building up their forces around the area as well as other measures with equipment. So we'll have to wait and see if the Russians actually do this. And this is also somewhat expected because the Russians are still preparing that summer mobilization with the mass amount of soldiers. And it looks like Kharkiv could be one of the hot spots when it comes to the fighting in the summer mobilization. But with that, we're moving on to our next article here, which goes to Walter Bloomberg. And in this post, we see Zelensky says that U.S. weapons have started to arrive in Ukraine in small amounts, but the process must be sped up. And like I said a moment ago, the Russian summer mobilization is coming, and Zelensky knows that. And even though it's a very good thing that aid was passed to Ukraine, that aid was passed a little bit late because it's already starting to become early summer and Zelensky is basically saying the weapons have not fully arrived yet uh, due to the late passage of aid. And even though we do know the U.S. did send attackums ahead of time before the aid bill was actually passed, the other weapons have not arrived just yet. So I think that's why we're seeing a ton of equipment being transported through Europe and to Ukraine at the moment because we're basically playing catch up to help arm Ukraine. So hopefully we can get those weapons shipments sped up pretty quick. But with that, we're jumping into our next post here, which goes to Nexta. And this is also a very good piece of news right here. It says the USA has purchased 81 Soviet era combat airplanes from Kazakhstan, and they may be handed over to Ukraine, says the Kiev Post. And the publication also emphasized that the planes are in a condition unsuitable for combat use, uh, but they can be used for spare parts or as decoys at airfields. So, you know, it is unfortunate these aircraft probably will not be used as actual fighter aircraft because they are in pretty rough condition, but they may be cannibalized for use by the Ukrainians to repair some of their aircraft or are, uh, or perhaps to use as decoys like the key post suggests. It's just, it's aid. It helps, but it's not the best thing that could have happened. But the, the USA is making efforts to try to help out Ukraine. Hopefully this does work for the Ukrainians. But with that, we're jumping into our next article here, which goes to the Kiev Independent. And in this post, we can see that the Ukrainian Air Force is now saying that Poland is capable of protecting Ukraine skies over western Ukraine but the political will is needed to actually get this done and down here below we can also see the Kiev Independent quoted Ilya Yevlash who's the Air Force spokesperson in Ukraine it looks like they said Poland is technically capable of protecting the skies over Ukraine's western regions with air defense and on this one I'll have to say this is quite an extreme statement by Ukraine obviously it would be good if Poland would help out with the air defense but the only problem with that is Poland is a NATO country and for Poland to start shooting down missiles over Ukraine to uh, specifically help Ukraine, not just to defend Polish uh, airspace, but to actually help the Ukrainian forces, that could be easily viewed uh, by the Russians as NATO entering the war. So I'm not sure if this is the best suggestion in the world, because we don't want to start a world war right now. That's not the uh, objective here. We're trying to stop that from happening by arming Ukraine. So I think right now this is a somewhat extreme suggestion. I understand where they're coming from, but it may not be the best thing at the moment. But anyways, we're moving on to our next post here, which goes to Trent Talenko. And in this post from Trent, we have some unfortunate news here. We are learning that today the Russians uh, performed a rocket attack in Odessa and they actually hit the uh, site of the Kivalov Estate, also known as the Harry Potter Castle, and it's currently burning. And in this video right here, which we're going to take a look at, you can see the damage is quite extensive. And that is just... 
broad daylight war crimes right there. They struck this building right here with what Trent says is cluster munition ballistic missiles uh, in the Odessa urban area. And we're, we're told here that cluster munitions are for military soft targets out in the open, like towed artillery or surface-to-air missile batteries. But here we are seeing pure terrorism. Uh, this unitary warhead was used to destroy a building right here, which is only housing civilians, uh, and is right in broad daylight. Just a absolute atrocity committed right in the middle of the day by the Russians. Uh, and the Russians are really getting worse with this over time. They're not getting better. And we did unfortunately hear that there were some casualties and also wounded from this attack. Uh, and it was all civilian casualties and wounded, by the way. It was not military targets whatsoever. Uh, and the Russians intentionally targeted this spot, knowing it would have only civilians in it. So absolutely sick. And something needs to be done to put a stop to this, because it's getting worse by the Russians. And uh, the world can't stand by while that happens. But with that, we're moving on to our next article here, which goes to the Kyiv Post. And we're learning now some good news, actually. This says, Polish farmers have unblocked all border checkpoints with Ukraine, says the Ukrainian State Border Guard Service. However, trucks transporting grain crops will not be allowed to enter Poland, and this type of cargo can only transit through Polish territory. So we're seeing here an, a partial unblocking of border checkpoints uh, because now the uh, grain crops can't really be transported through Polish territory, according to this post. But we are seeing that the Polish farmers have backed off their blockade and they're letting some trucks through. So that is promising. And it sounds like maybe something has been done in the background to basically uh, appease the Polish farmers and allay their concerns that they're being undercut by Ukrainian grain. But with that, we're moving into our next article here, which also goes to Nexta. And we do have some more good news here. We can see that Canada will transfer 50 armored personnel carriers to Ukraine, says the Defense Minister Bill Blair, and according to him, the first 10 LAV-2 ACSV Super Bison combat vehicles will be sent this summer to Germany, where the Ukrainian military will undergo the appropriate training program, and by the fall they should go to the front. And we're also being told the armored personnel carriers are part of a $650 million military support package to Kyiv. And this is very good support by the Canadians, because they're sending 50 of these vehicles right here, which are very capable combat vehicles. I'm glad to see the Canadians are also stepping up and supporting Ukraine while the U.S. just did so. And it sounds like also the EU is stepping up as well. So there was a long hiatus of a lack of military aid to Ukraine, but now it looks like people have totally switched their tune and it looks like Ukraine is getting armed. But speaking of Ukraine aid, we're moving on to our next post here, which goes to the Kyiv Post. And we're seeing that the NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg arrived in Kyiv today on an unannounced visit. And he announced in a huge announcement that NATO could create a special fund of 100 billion euros to support Ukrainian defense. According to President Volodymyr Zelensky, allies do have the possibility to implement such an initiative. So this is another massive potential fund being created by NATO. We just saw the $61 billion uh, U.S. aid package get passed in Congress. So it's very promising to see that NATO is even stepping up to it as an organization. And I'm very glad to see that that is going through, hopefully. But anyways, we're moving on to our next post here, which goes to Bliskov on Twitter. And it says, there are a number of developments on how to safely deploy the F-16 fighters on the territory of Ukraine. And this was stated by the spokesperson Ilya uh, Yevlash once again. And the idea is to deploy them on different types of runways where it'll be difficult for Russia to detect the fighters. And it's also necessary to properly prepare the place of their basing. And this is a huge amount of money. And something here that is a big point, the Ukrainians are saying that they're talking about underground shelters and bunkers to actually store the F-16 jets. And this would be a very big deal indeed, and this shows you how uh, highly the Ukrainians are valuing these new jets they're going to be receiving. They're actually planning on building underground bunkers to actually house the jets while they're not being used. So that is a very good way to protect the jets. It's going to be very costly to do that, but it's probably worth it to protect these investments because Ukraine has waited a long time uh, to get these F-16s, and they don't want to lose them right off the bat by the Russians targeting and destroying most of them uh, basically immediately after they arrive. But with that, we're moving on to our last post of the day, which goes to Nexta. And it says here that Poland wants to mine the border with Russia and Belarus. And according to the former commander of the Polish army and also former deputy minister of national defense, he said in an interview with Delphi that a conflict between Russia and NATO seems unlikely to him. And nevertheless, he believes that it's necessary to build fortifications and minefields 
on the border with Russia and Belarus in order to finally ward off potential aggression on their part. And also the uh, former commander said that Ukraine's situation on the front is complicated and he suggested that Russian troops could launch a major offensive within weeks. This is more confirmation even from the uh, Polish commander here that Russia is indeed planning that summer mobilization. And Zelensky's saying it, the West is saying it. I think at this point it's pretty much a done deal. Russia is going to try to blitz Ukraine during the summer and it's going to be a pretty challenging summer for Ukraine. Ukraine, but with the new equipment arriving very soon and also the shipments hopefully getting sped up by the West, uh, Ukraine should be completely ready to handle that and they should have also enough manpower to hold off the Russian hordes. The only challenge always is the Russians are using a totally different strategy than Ukraine is using. The Russians don't care about their soldiers, so they're able to send them in and basically use them as meat shields and just let them die left and right. Uh, and the Ukrainians aren't like that. They're actually doing it the right way and not just throwing their soldiers out there to die. They're actually protecting their men, which is what you should do in a war. But when you're like Putin and you don't care about people, you just throw them out there and let them basically have what happens to them and you don't care. Um, but that's the Russian strategy. It's always been that way ever since the war started because the Russians have no actual uh, strategy or real training. But the fact that the Polish want to uh, mine the border with Russia and Belarus, that actually sounds like a pretty decent idea. I think that is a wise thing to do is if Russia ever decides to invade Poland or do something absolutely berserk like that, then they want to go ahead and have that defense in place. Uh, they already have a bit of wall, which you can see right here, uh, which does work. But I think mining it may be a wise thing to do as well, just to let Russia know that Poland is not messing around. But with that, that is actually our last piece of news for the day. Uh, today is our off day. It is Monday, of course, but there was some news to cover, so we made the Midday War video today. Um, but if you like the video, please press the like button and subscribe to the channel as well, because that greatly helps out the channel and helps us get the news out there. And also, if you want to support our operation financially because we are largely crowdfunded by the viewers you can sign up below on our patreon page the link is in the description and we greatly appreciate the financial support and of course be sure to join us tomorrow at 10 p.m eastern for our nightly war news stream uh, and we'll see you all then so of course bye bye for now